Hey guys, I think I originally intended to include this on the last video, but it will now be all by, not by its lonesome, because I'm going to put two slides in this, but um, it is going to maybe be a little shorter than what I was expecting. But this, uh, I'm going to stop saying but, but effect, effectively, I do have a different plan that maybe these went with assessment, because um, labs and diagnostic are a part of assessments, but they are, mm, I'm going to stop saying but, um, however, <laughs> there is a, I can connect, I can make it work. Um, I will make it as special because it deserves its own video. So um, we're going to talk more about like labs that you do in like the acute period, but I want to think about overall, like what do I need to look for as the nurse for labs and diagnostics? Um, so probably one of the biggest or top priority labs that I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, I let the other cat out because remember I told you I, I had to like close one into a room because the other one has dementia and forgets that she exists. And so it's, it's she's scared of her own shadow. It's a hard life. Um, anyway, um, so if you hear meowing, it's just the one is so excited that I let her out of her, um, uh, out of the room. So anyway, um, so the priority test that we're going to do on um, the diagnostic that we're going to do for a patient, especially in that acute period, probably like the first test that we want to get done. I don't mean it's the first thing that we're going to do when they get in the door, but it's the first test that we're going to want to get done. Usually like major test is going to be getting a CT. Um, it's super quick. They actually have like mobile CTs now that they can do for stroke, um, that they can act. There's actually ambulances that you can get like a CT and like, they can help to diagnose if you're having a stroke. Um, uh, we caught super early, like before you even get to the hospital. Um, so the priority test is a CT. So what's the point of doing a CT? So most people would say, oh, so you can see the clot. Here's the thing is, is that you cannot see an acute um, ischemic stroke or a clot stroke um, on a CT early. Like later on, like a couple days later, you might be able to see it on a CT, but it's going to take time. Now an MRI, you can see it right away, but MRIs are not readily available. They take time. We have to screen people. And um, like, the, like an MRI can be done in like 30 seconds of MRI. Uh, so blah, 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 I'm saying backwards a CT of the head can be done in like 30 seconds whereas an MRI could take like up to 30 minutes um, to um, really get a good picture of everything that we need um, so that's why our priority test when it comes to um, you know um, stuff we're going to do early on and I'll talk about this more when I talk about treatment is going to be to get a CT of the head because um, what I'm trying to do here is since I cannot see if they're having an ischemic stroke, effectively what I'm doing is I'm just ruling out that they're not bleeding. Now, you may be wondering, like, why am I ruling out that there's no blood in their head? I don't mean we, we do a CT of their head. I guess I should update this and say CT head. Um, but um, effectively, what I'm trying to get at is, is when this patient comes in, we want to get a CT because practically we're trying to figure out is, are they having a bleeding stroke or are they having a clot stroke? Now the CT can't show that they're having a clot stroke, not yet, take a few days, but a CT can show me if they're bleeding right now, like bleeding is going to show up right away. You might wonder, well, why would I want to know that? Well, I would want to know that we haven't talked about treatments yet, but I would want to know that because if they're not bleeding, then they may qualify to get TPA, which is a treatment used for clot strokes or ischemic strokes. Um, so effectively, um, the CT is ruling out that they're not having a hemorrhagic stroke. So I can see if they qualify for treatment for a clot stroke or an ischemic stroke. Um, later on, usually within 24 to 48 hours, we'll get that MRI, but it's not the first thing we want to do. Um, we also want to look for bleeding or lack of clotting. Um, so we'll check, you know, a hemoglobin, hematocrit, see if there's, um, if it's decreased, um, a platelet count to see how they're clotting, and then also maybe a PTT, INR, um, things like that to see how well they're clotting. Because sometimes people come in, they've had a stroke, and they have an elevated INR because they're on uh, warfarin or coumadin. We're also going to, um, the clotting we do, the clotting labs we want to do pretty early to um, see if there's any contraindications or issues with giving them TPA if we think they've had an ischemic stroke. Um, but we want to make sure that they're not bleeding because we don't want to give a medication that can make someone bleed really bad to someone who's already bleeding. Um, then we're also going to look for electrolyte imbalances, like get a chemistry, check the kidney function, um, just in general, because there, there can be some of those that are altered. But another priority one here is the blood glucose. Now, you may be saying like, hmm, because people with diabetes are more likely to have strokes, or maybe you're thinking stroke could cause hyper or hypoglycemia, um, but it's not quite that. The reason we get the blood glucose is, um, if you remember back to what we learned about hypoglycemia um, when we talked about diabetes, is that actually the symptoms of 
um, hypoglycemia look a lot like a stroke. And so effectively what we're doing when we're getting this blood glucose is we're ruling out that they're actually having a stroke. Like we're ruling out that it's not something else like that. Oh, they're not just having these symptoms because they um, have a low blood glucose. Because remember when people's blood glucose gets low, their heart starts racing. They have a decreased level of consciousness. They get confused, irritable, restless. Um, they can even get into a coma like state. So we just want to check that blood glucose because the same thing happens with like, um, to the point, like when people's blood glucose gets low, like I think I've told this story before in cardiac, but um, when I used to do like rapid response, because um, the ICU that I worked in, we didn't have um, a rapid response. The, the hospital I used to work at didn't have a rapid response team. Um, whoever was working ICU at night had to sometimes take over that role or do that role. So we got a code, uh, a code blue over on the PCU towers. And I went over to go check on um, patient and uh, went and found that they had, um, you know, like the, the nurses were doing CPR and stuff. But then I see the guy sitting up in the bed by the time I got there. Um, and um, they were like, oh, yeah, you know, we checked his blood glucose. He was just hypoglycemic. Like apparently they couldn't feel a pulse on him. So they thought he was um, they thought he was dead. And so they started CPR in him, but then they started pounding on his chest and he woke up and was like, what? And so then they checked his blood sugar and they were like, oh, he's just has a low blood sugar. So what I'm trying to get at is that a low blood sugar can look like a lot of other things. Um, it can look like the patient's cardiac arresting, or it can also look like stroke. So we were just trying to rule out that there's nothing else going on. Um, then additionally, we're going to look for blockages and we're going to do that through, um, angiography, which is where um, effectively it's the same as like a heart cath, but it's a brain cath. That's where we're going in and we're seeing that there's good flow. Um, and then we can also do, uh, we can just look, or we usually that when they do angiography, we're going into like remove blockages. Um, so the cerebral angiography is something we usually do as a procedure um, to um, look for and uh, fix blockages if we can. And that's something that's going to be done, you know, pretty early if we think it can help, um, but it's not going to necessarily be the first thing that they go to. Um, then later on, we'll do stuff where we're going to look to see how their um, blood flow is in general to their brain. Because if they had like an ischemic stroke or a flow issue, it usually sometimes, especially if they had a plaque issue, it usually starts here in their carotids where they'll have um, like uh, increased plaques in their neck. Um, and so... Um, we're, we'll do like a carotid Doppler where effectively we're trying to see if, um, if there's like a plaque buildup or issues here in their neck. And we'll start with that um, and assess blood flow there, because even if we can fix the issue that's up here, if they already have decreased flow in the, um, I like to call them the, oh, the hoses in our neck, um, if they have decreased flow there, then it's going to make it um, a continued problem up here as well. So effectively checking for flow issues, but that's something we do a couple days later. We don't have to do that right away. Um, this It's not like a emergent part of it. Um, then also detecting heart problems, because usually, um, again, we've talked about this kind of when it comes to causes of um stroke that like most of these people have cardiovascular disease, they have um, a hypertension, they could have heart issues, they could be an AFib. So we want to do things like get an EKG, get a chest x-ray, um, uh, in an echo, um, check to make sure they're not having a heart attack too. Cause like, let's say that they threw, um, they're having a stroke, they threw a blood clot, like they have AFib. We want to make sure that they're not also having a heart attack. Um, and then a loop lipid panel. Now we might get the, some of these early, like the EKG, um, things like that, maybe the chest x-ray, um, the biomarkers, but some, a lot of the stuff, like not, I mean, I wouldn't even say the biomarkers. We might get the, e, we'll probably get the EKG pretty earlier, uh, pretty earlier, pretty early, uh, maybe the chest x-ray, but the rest of the stuff, it's just like, I'm doing a cardiac workup to see what are their risk factors and how can I modify those? Um, like what their lipid panel says or um, things like that is not gonna necessarily make a difference. We may get the cardiac biomarkers early if we suspect that they're having a heart attack, but effectively we're trying to see like, is there damage anywhere else or what are their other cardiac risk factors? Um, so big picture here, the priority ones, which again, I'll reiterate later, but um, stat head CT, check about bleeding and clotting early on, check a blood glucose, and then we'll usually get them. If they had an ischemic, we'll get them to go and um, take a look if there's a blockage, et cetera. The rest of the stuff is just general cardiac maintenance and seeing how, um, what risk factors and stuff come up. So how do I know someone with a stroke is getting better or worse? So it depends on the location of the injury. 
Um, and so, um, you know, everyone's going to be a little bit different. So I'm talking really general here, um, but as a whole, we would know someone with the stroke is getting better if their mental status is improving or stable, if they have, a, they're more awake, their level of consciousness is improving or stable. Um, and really the big thing we're looking for is that their deficits are better. So, um, you know, as a whole, especially like with an acute stroke patient, I want, I want to see that their motor is better, their speech cognition, depending on what they're missing or what they were struggling with is better. And then of course, a stroke patient is better if, um, or what my goal is, or my hope is, is that they're going to, um, you know, not have complications or remain free from complications and they can have a lot. Um, we're going to talk about them. Um, a client with a stroke is getting worse if their mental status is declining, if their level of consciousness is declining, or if there's a worsening or decline in their deficit. So like maybe they're getting more muscular, musculoskeletal weakness, um, their speech is um, declining, their mental status or cognitions or ability to like think and put things together is declining. I'm thinking about myself as I'm saying that. I'm like, it's funny that you're saying that in your mental status is declining, but it's all good. I'm the pot calling the kettle black. Um, and then um, the other thing would be is if they had a complication. So some like, I'm just naming a few, um, aspiration, fall, or any complication of immobility like DVT, pneumonia, constipation, et cetera. I think that's it for this. We're going to get into treatments for stroke next. See you there.